Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Open Line. We were talking with Dr. Bruce Randolph. He's the health officer of the Shelby County Department of Health. We're talking about why are African Americans at greater risk as the data shows in city after city for the coronavirus. Um, it's been an interesting discussion. Let's go back to the phones here. Let's go to Leon. Hello, Leon. Are you there? I'm here. All right, go right ahead. How you doing? How you doing, Ben? Doing well. Doing well. Good. Um, I had a couple of comments. As far as um, like just immediate, what everybody can do, everybody, every race can start wearing masks when they go out. I've been out for the past week or two, and I have nobody's really on any side of the race spectrum taking the mask seriously. And then you got to think, I haven't seen the mayor in a in a mask. I haven't seen any public official wearing masks until we can get this thing under control. It's pertinent that everybody wears a mask. It's nobody that's too good for a mask because just because you, you ain't sick or nothing, that don't mean that, that you're not a carrier of the disease. So I don't think that's fair to the whole public. These stores, when you come in there, it ought to be required that you have a mask on. It shouldn't be a, a, a choice. It should be required. In some cities, you can't even be on the public transportation system unless you have a mask on. We already, in these buildings, you're already closed in. They have no ventilation. They get you inside the building and keep the doors closed. So and you think you right now people, do you think people are not wearing masks? Do you think that's something that's not happening? Yes. Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you, Leon. Let's let's uh, let's ask Dr. Randolph about that. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. What what do you think about that, Dr. Randolph? I think that wearing the mask uh, is very important. If you remember earlier, we sort of discouraged everybody from wearing masks, primarily because there was a shortage, and people were going out and just hoarding all of the masks. And we didn't even have enough for uh, our health care providers and first respond um, and, and, and the first responders. Um, one important thing about the mask is that the mask does not necessarily prevent you from getting the virus, but it prevents you from spreading the virus in case you have it and, and, and you're not aware of it. And what I mean by that is it's been shown that this virus uh, can be transmitted uh, through respiratory droplets that can occur from when you sneeze, cough, or uh, even when you're speaking. And so wearing the mask keeps your droplets to yourself and not contaminate someone else. Now, if everybody's doing that, then yes, I think there's uh, lessons that we can learn from our Korean brothers and sisters and the uh, brothers and sisters in China. If you notice, all of them have masks. Um, and so I think that that is going to be one way that we um, open up the economy. And that is emphasizing that um, though we're a allowing people to resume some activity, encourage them to wear either a mask or facial covering over their mouth and nose, and still practice to certain degree of safe separation, social distancing as uh, possible. Because that is, uh, the key at this point. I mean, we're dealing with the virus that we have really no vaccine for yet and no proven therapy for yet. Uh, and so the only thing that we can do is to try to prevent the transmission of it through uh, separation, through wearing a uh, covering of our face, faces. I'm seeing some people here in Nashville wearing masks. Um, how, how widespread are, are masks there? Are people wearing masks, do you think, in, in Shelby County? Pretty much, yeah. I would say that quite a few, you know, uh, uh, 
Of course, I don't have mine on because on this uh, show. But when we are, for example, um, when we do our press conference, right before the cameras start rolling, we take our mask off. But uh, as soon as we're off camera, we all put it on, the mayors and myself and all the other officials. And in our workplace here at the health department, uh, I've uh, mandated that everybody wear a mask in the workplace Uh, and I think you're going to see more of that uh, because that is going to be one way of decreasing the spread of this virus. All right, let's go to Harvey now. Hello, Harvey. Yes. Go right ahead. Yes, I uh, I can ask my question now. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, how are you? I have a question for the doctor or uh, uh, his thoughts. Doctor, in the past, whether we're talking about the Great War, or we're talking about the Vietnam War, and we had a campaign that said we are all Americans. And at this particular point in time, there's a campaign that says we are in this all together. Now, it only comes up in a crisis that we are in this all together. My question to you, obviously, we need to have a campaign after this crisis passed for the health care system to address our needs, that being African Americans, and continue to be in all this, to, we are all in this together. So my question to you, doctor, what is the health department or do you feel the issue that the government will do that will continue we are all in this together so that we don't face such a crisis again among our community okay all right what do you think about that well i mean i think that to address the health disparities in this country it has to be addressed on multiple levels. So as an individual, there are some things that I can do. I can, to the best of my ability, try to move more, eat less, manage stress, move more, eat less, manage stress. To the best of my ability, I can sort of make better choices and try to avoid the excess, the excess drinking, excess smoking, uh, uh, the violence, all of these other issues that contribute to um, uh, poor health outcomes. As an individual, I can do to the best of my ability to try to learn as much as I can. work and save as much as I can. As an individual, I can participate in this great democracy and let my wishes be known through uh, my vote and be actively involved and make sure that uh, people that I elect indeed represent my values and, and, and my desires and my needs. I think as a uh, society, uh, particularly uh, a lot of these disparities are gonna have to come through policy. Uh, And um, that's where um, collectively um, as a democracy, we need to make sure that those who are making policy um, represent our interests. Uh, and, and so that is where the change is going to come from individually, but collectively, but as a society through policy, uh, making insurance and health care available to everyone, for instance. Um, you know, as our system is set up now, a lot of our health care is through work. Your job provides your insurance. 
um, but we would have to examine um, how do we um, address that whereby everyone could have access to health care. All right, we're going to, we're gonna... yeah, I think that's a great point. We're going to take a break and then I want to come back and, and talk about, um, do you think this will lead to cha change? Um, you know, where, where do we go from here? But we'll, we'll take a break, uh, take a quick break. We'll be back right after this.